Well, guten Morgen. Uh, good morning, everyone. As president uh, for this year, can I warmly welcome you uh, today? 2015 is, of course, a critical year for ensuring the world works together to deliver a successful new climate change agreement in Paris in December. Without wanting to in any way preempt that discussion, can I again exercise the Chair's right and note that key conundrum, it seems to me, about how to, in light of this year's theme, maintain connectivity that's so important for countries around the world and indeed enhance and improve it whilst also reducing emissions and the other impacts of climate change. The topic of today's session is mitigating the transport-related climate change impacts of trade and tourism. It is clear to all of us that climate change is a very serious challenge to our society in general, and in particular to the transport sector. Now we will listen uh, to the uh, message of the United Nations Secretary General, Ban Ki-moon. Climate impacts are increasing. I urge all of you to accelerate your efforts. Find new green solutions. Be a champion within your industry and urge others to commit to a new sustainable transport future. You help connect the world. With your help, we can make a world of difference. Ladies and gentlemen, Excellencies, convinced of the feasibility of ambitious targets, we want to contribute to realizing the global agreement on climate change that empowers the transport sector with your unmitigated support. Key initiatives are required now. One key signal would be to universally converge on the determination to set a value, or values to start with, for CO2. You've insisted on the need, in political terms, for clear signals and visible instruments in terms of the business community forming its own strategy and developing its own policies. We at Michelin, when we invest for the future, we invest for the next 40 years, when we build a new plan, for example. So we need visibility. We need clear views. This is why I mentioned the obvious necessity to have a price for TO2 now, because we have to be able to integrate this notion of price in our future investments. We need a regulatory framework which is smart, simple and on a very general level. The what is the responsibility of politicians, the how is uh, the responsibility of the industry. What is right today may be wrong tomorrow. So we need lots of flexibility in the framework. But this Framework is vital for the private sector for innovation because we need, um, we need stability in order to invest in innovation and on the other hand it's important for the deployment of business models. It is also clear that the world is needing to follow a new pattern of growth served by truly sustainable transport systems. I was very pleased to see in the local newspaper our colleague Minister Dobrindt in a BMW i3 and in the UK we have a £500 million package of measures which will support the market in ultra-low emission vehicles. In fact, we are leading the way in developing these technologies. We've shown that simply by adopting existing cost-effective fuel economy technologies, it's possible to reduce average fuel consumption in light-duty vehicles by 50% by 2050, and we term this our 50 by 50 target. Achieving that alone would save us up to two gigatons of CO2 from 2050. What is really important is that we join forces and that we really, really build this together in all different layers and all different levels, because equally important are technical contribution as well as behavior change that we need to all participate in. Of course, the policies and frameworks that you're all asking for, and I'm, I know that with an open dialogue, we will be moving into the right direction. Please. Before Paris, during Paris, and after Paris, be brave, be ambitious, be listening to uh, the civil society, and heavily invest in shared transportation. That will certainly help the generation to come and avoid unsustainable development. 
Thank you.